Welcome back. You're watching NHL tonight, taking a look at the moves that the Winnipeg Jets have made this summer. And I know you said earlier in the show you're pretty high on the Winnipeg Jets. I'm in bullish the on these Jets. Conference. This season, you can take a look at some of the subtractions. Uh, we'll highlight the additions. Riley Nash, Brendan Dillon, and Nate Schmidt, who is nice enough to join us on NHL tonight right now. Uh, Nate, how's your summer going so far? It's been great. Yeah. Uh... We just chat a little bit back behind the stage, you know what, playing a little pickleball, doing this, working out, skating, you know, trying to keep the uh, keep the body, keep the, keep the body guessing a little bit, you know, if you will. <laughs> All right, so we were guessing where you might end up after your one year in Vancouver. You weighed that no trade clause and you headed uh, to Winnipeg. What, what was appealing about Winnipeg as a destination for your hockey career? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, one thing when you look back on it, you see, you know, I talked to Paul, you know, Paul Stassi has been a really good friend of mine for a long, you know, for, you know, for the last four or five years, he's been awesome. Him and I have the same agent too. So like I've always kind of known of him and, and whatnot. And so you have the opportunity to talk to him and he's like, man, I've been back. It's my third time, you know, essentially going back, right. They had me and then I they get traded for him again. So and you start talking to him about the group and about, uh, you know, Paul Maurice and about, you know, and playing against these guys, you know, like you think, wow, you know, they're such a dynamic forward group with great, uh, you know, just a couple of great defenders, you know, on the back end, great goaltenders, like maybe a couple pieces away. And then to go and get Brand Dillon, which is huge, it actually, you know, it brings a lot to your table, uh, a lot to your team. And then, you know, you start looking like, man, this team could be something that, uh, you know, I played against these guys, you know, a couple of years ago in the Western Conference Finals. Probably the hardest series that we played in. I know that we won 4 1 when I was in Vegas, but. Wasn't an easy series by any means. And right now, I think you look back at that team compared to this team, a lot of the same guys, but, you know, their D look a little bit differently. And hopefully, you know, and a goaltender that looks even better than he was, you know, when he first came in the league. So if you look at the lineup, I think it looks, you know, like it's got a lot of great tangible parts to it to, you know, be and, and dad myself and just very happy to be a part of it. Yeah, Nate, and congratulations. I, I'm really strong on these Jets. I think they're capable of great things in, in the coming year. Uh, you know, since the transaction, I'm sure you've had some time to talk with either Coach Paul Maurice, uh, manager Kevin Chevaldeoff, or perhaps both. Uh, you know, we've got you slotted in the top four on the right side. Have you talked specifics about role, responsibility, potential pairings, anything like that? Yeah, we, we talked a little bit about it. Uh, not to give away, you know, too much, but we, we did talk about, you know, the idea of, you know, seeing how, you know, you know I, I primarily played my right side. They're like, hey, we, we'd love to you to play with Josh and see where we're going to go from there. But you know what? If, uh, you know, if he slides over to the right and we want to put him with Dilly, and then if I would go in with Neil Pionk, who's another, you know, unbelievable young player that's come up and been, you know, really kind of burst on the scene with you know, with the Rangers and now really starting to come into his own here. And, you know, when we're playing against him this last year, see what kind of dynamics he can he can bring to the table. Uh, he's like, you know, we have some options there on the front, you know, with some versatility, especially, uh, like I said, I've been so used to playing the right side. That's something that uh, I feel really comfortable with. Um, you know, Josh is a, a Morris. He's an unbelievable defenseman in our league. And if it's me playing with him, that that's, that sounds fantastic. I, you know, it sounds like two guys can get up and play move box and get moving and, and really be a part of that attack. Hopefully not five guys, but just four, <laughs> just four guys. <laughs> One of us will stay back. I do know that. <laughs> uh, we know you're knee deep in the pickleball uh, this summer, but when you are finding time to to train and stuff, is there a specific thing that you're working on this summer that that maybe you want to improve on heading into your first season in Winnipeg? Yeah, you know what? Actually, something that we've really been you know, looking at for this last year. Uh, not only is it in the weight room, um, you know, I've kind of gone away from all the heavy weights. We've gotten really uh, explosive band eccentric, you know, things like that um, with uh, our trainer down here. And that's something that we just getting that explosiveness, you know, back to where I, I, I've i had it before. I don't, you know, with the shortened off season last year with the bubble stuff, but you feel like you didn't really have everything you could, you know, heading into the last season or half or so. And so that was something that I really wanted to get back into. Um, and, and you know what, actually, you know, today, one of the big things that, you know, we're working on too for us as defensemen is being able to contribute a little bit more. I mean, I, I've always had uh, found myself up in the play, but you know, when you do get chances, you got to score, especially in this league and bearing down on those, uh, you know, on those opportunities, because you know, we're not going to get a whole lot of them. So working on being able to catch, shoot, I've changed, I, I've, I've flipped around my curve a little bit to be able to be a little bit more offensive with it. So 
Um, there are some things that I've tinkered with because, like I said, it's, uh, you know, I've said this before, I'll say it again, Billy being a doctor dad. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Hey, you're, uh, you're a Minnesota guy. Nate, uh, I got to believe Beauty League is up and running, if not already, but coming pretty quick. How's, uh, how's the Beauty League game? You're a member in good standing. And the other part of that, do you, do you see this odd-looking soul up there, Brian Lawton, our colleague, taking notes and <laughs> kind of scouting you guys? Hey, yeah, guy, you know, long, you know, good hair. That good guy, hair. Yeah, that's him. Sure. <laughs> that's the guy. That's the guy. <laughs> Something that I wish I still had. But uh, you know what? Yeah, beauty league is going on. It's going well. It's. Uh, I mean, it's, you know what? It was weird. The first time that was the first time I played in front of fans. You know, in the last probably a year and a half. So right. it was pretty cool, especially to go out with you know and see kids and whatnot. It's just such a fun league to to be able to go out and get into and and uh, you know what most of the guys there will sit and sign autographs for kids long after their games are over because that's what it's really all about. You know, it's being able to give back to your community and even guys from all over the place are coming in and playing and it just makes a lot of fun. And it's good to, you know, as you guys know, it's good to, you know, yuck it up in the in the, in the locker room before games and getting to cross pass everybody again and, and just getting to catch up with old friends. Uh, I want to ask you about, uh, speaking of old friends, uh, a former teammate of yours, Marc-Andre Fleury, this summer. You know, maybe the biggest head-scratcher this summer for NHL News was the trade to Chicago. And we weren't sure if he was going to play. He made the announcement over the weekend that he's in and ready to get to work. What, what was your reaction when you saw the news that the Flower is now a member of the Blackhawks? Yeah, well, it's twofold. One... You know, I was I was bummed for Flower, right? I mean, that guy is, you know, was I know he was Pittsburgh, he was Vegas, I know more than anybody I think uh, has been. Um, the city loves him, you know, and so you thought, wow, you know, I can't believe this happened. And then my second thought is, I really hope he doesn't play this year. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to play against him five times, <laughs> you know, just for the fact that in your division, you know. But no, nah, in all things considered, the guy has a fantastic year. I, you know, I. I I know that he was probably a little, you know, probably pretty bummed and pretty devastated after it was over. But you look at it, Chicago, the moves that they've made, the guys they've gone out and got, um, they still got, you know, Patty Kane, Taves up the middle. Like, it, it, they got a lot of good young players. They're a sneaky, really good team, you know. And you add a, add a guy that just came off of Vesna for free. <laughs> you got to think you could be able to handle that one. <laughs> you know, Nate, looking just kind of back at your background, you're a U.S. born guy, but I got to leave the, I got to believe the following two things, given now that you're transitioning over to Winnipeg, the following two aspects of your background leave you in a really good spot to kind of transition into the Jets roster. You're a Minnesota born guy. It's right up the road, basically, to Winnipeg from St. Cloud, where you're from. And then you really had some experience playing in a Canadian market, given, you know, last year's uh, you know, assignment to the Vancouver Canucks. You feel like that gives you kind of a little bit of familiarity stepping into a Jets roster, playing for the Win Winnipeg Jets? Yeah, you know what? I don't think anyone can really prepare you for playing in Canada. It's just a different animal, right? It's just hockey such a big part of the culture, which is honestly is really cool. It's a really cool part to be, you know, looked at and be like, man, this is hockey. This is what we're at. You're, you're right in the middle of the hockey world, um, which is really cool. Uh, and being close to home is also, you know, a lot of fun being able to, a lot of people you send out texts, Hey, I can't wait. You know, it's a six hour drive, but we, you know, once the borders open, we're going to be there. It sounds fantastic. I'm not sure if Winnipeg's ready for my crazy family, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, you know what? It's, it's exciting, you know, and, and you know what, if, you know, for my fiance as well, for her to be able to pop home if, if we're on the road and be able to see friends and family as well. Um, and, you know, and speaking of guys, you know, Blake Wheeler, He's just, you know, a guy that played at the University of Minnesota in the cabin. You know, I just skated with him today. It's good to see old faces and know guys. And when you go into a room, you already have some familiarity with some some of the guys. Perfect. Stu mentioned you grew up uh, in Minnesota at or in St. Cloud, I should say. I, I want to know, uh, did you play baseball growing up? I'll start with that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. I, I, I know I, where I, this is going. The, the catch, <laughs> the catch of the year. We have video of it. Take us through this charity <laughs> softball event. I, Stu, oh this gosh. is the first time oh Stu's seen this. Are you kidding me? Uh, the floor is yours, Nate. Take us through this. Man, it was wild. First of all, that freaking night is so, it was so cool. I mean, to have all that, you know, we have a lot of ex Vegas guys there. Call and myself were there. And you have guys like Greg Maddox were there, Marcus Allen, Tim Brown from the, from the Raiders guys, and then you know, Josh Jacobs, Darren Waller, all these guys, you know, all the guys in the Knights. And it was it was so cool. I mean, we, we raised over $175,000 for, um, for for kids playing sports in the area and autistic kids as well. It's just, it was such a cool event. This 
was incredible because the batter before this, I told Ryan Reeves, I said, man, next time a guy hits a home run, I'm just going to jump over the fence, go catch it, you know, as a joke. <laughs> and the guy hit it, and I was like, oh, Reeves, I'm going to jump. Oh, my God. And all of a sudden, he started running back a little bit. And I'm like, dude, this isn't going to make it. And sure enough, you're looking up, and I went to went to reach back, and as soon as I hit, it, hit my glove, I'm like, man, I better not get hurt when I do this. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, you make the catch in midair, and honestly, I mean, there was 15,000 people there. The place went bananas. I went bananas. Honestly, it was, it was, uh, hey, it's a dream come true. Anyone that's ever played, you always dream of the, like that one, that game saving catch or something like that, robbing somebody. It was, uh, it was so, it was so cool. It was a, such a fun event too, and for such a good cause. Yeah, it was amazing, amazing to see it uh, catch some steam on social media. We <laughs> oh, cool. obviously work under the same roof as MLB Network, and I'm pretty sure they ran that <laughs> as one of their highlights as well. So anytime exactly. you can make NHL Network and MLB Network two of the top four, you're doing something right. Uh, Nate, always fun to catch up with you. As we mentioned, one of the best uh, guys in the NHL as far as your charisma and just your personality. We appreciate that, and wish you nothing but the best uh, up in Winnipeg this season. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Good luck, All mate. Right.